I'm usually a pretty upbeat person. But that has just got me slightly angry. So I think this whole thing gets back to the point of the conflict between reseller and thrift store. And clearly this lady in here at this thrift store does not like resellers. And I still really don't understand why. Wednesday. Wednesday. A little Wednesday vlog. Mm. Um, I wanted to kick off this vlog today by talking about our sales numbers. Because I might just throw some B-roll of that over the top, Courtney. Yeah. Um, I said in last week's or Monday's video that we had a really quiet weekend of sales. So much so, it was actually $91 that came in on Saturday and only $66 that came in on Sunday. And when you're a full-time seller or you're doing 130000 in revenue like we are, 91 and 66 is very uncommon. You don't experience that. And I think a lot of sellers of any size, when you see a big drop in sales, it can be very, very easy to get flustered and a bit worried and a bit concerned. But after the weekend that I had and jumping into eBay again on Monday, feeling refreshed, I really said in that video that I wasn't feeling too concerned about it because I knew that we could get back on track with it. And that's absolutely what's taken place. On Monday and Tuesday, we did $344 in sales and then we did $334 in sales the very next day, back to back. And while they aren't above average, they are just back to normal numbers that we need from a sales perspective. And then when you look at the numbers over the course of the last 10 days for the month, we're trying to do $11,000. That's $366 a day. And right now we are averaging at this very moment, $350 a day. So we are right on track. Yes, it was a bad weekend, but you just let it ride out. You don't, get, you don't get down, you don't get frustrated, you don't stop listing, you don't give up on eBay. You just know that there are ebbs and flows to eBay and if you play it on a long game, you're gonna be fine. Um, that's one of the biggest things that I've learned and I think it's one of the biggest things you've got to, kind of the hurdle you've got to get over when you're a brand new seller. We always wanna be looking at what are we making today or what did we make in sales in the last hour? Did a sale come through? Forget about that, just think very, very long term and, uh, and you'll be fine. It always, the algorithm always balances out as long as you do your bit. And your bit refers to what we're gonna be doing in this video today, which is listing up a lot of items and shipping off a lot of items as well because we've just had a couple of back-to-back -back 300s and we're gonna talk about those sales in this video. All right, first one we're gonna talk about is this Nintendo 64 Super Mario game. Um, these Nintendo 64 games are really good to find out in thrift. They usually, if they're in good condition, turn over really, really quick. Um, and this one was actually my favorite game growing up. You loved it. I love this one. Super Mario. Yeah, literally this exact game. Um, we got a 70, $70. 70 bucks. For this. Um, and completely honest, we can't remember where we found it. I was just going to say... But it 100% would not have been a thrift store. Yeah. Because these are very, very hard, hard to find in thrift stores. It's almost like the biggest Hail Mary play if yeah. you find a Nintendo 64 game in a thrift store. Yeah. But it would have been a bulk buy. Um, I just I don't remember. exactly remember. But um, look, it's a huge category to find, um, vintage video games. We don't have a lot of them down there because they just sell very, mm. very fast. Um, we've got more of the modern video games, as you can see up here. Um, but we are wrapped to see that one come through because the shipping of that, what are we going to do? Um, bubble wrap in a small satchel? I think so. Yeah. Squirtle. How cute is he? Yeah. You never did Pokemon cards as a kid, hey? No, not really. Do you remember the main, like, Pokemon? Uh, Pikachu. Pikachu. Yeah. Squirtle. <laughs> yeah. He was one of the main ones. Yeah, right. Um, this is a really nice card, mm. to be honest with you. It's a secret rare. Now, I don't know if we can, maybe we'll, after this, we'll put a little camera clip over that I can put in the edit. 170 slash 165. What that means is it's a secret rare and it can be worth a little bit more. We got this Pokemon card off Selwyn and um, it sold for $70. So on consignment, a 50% share of the profit. We make about 50, uh, 25 bucks each, Selwyn and I. Um, so I'm really happy about that. At $70, you probably wouldn't go ahead and get this one graded. But if you had a Pokemon card worth maybe $150 to $200 odd dollars raw, um, it'd be very much in your best interest to go and get it graded by companies like PSA, uh, where they actually check the condition of the card. And if it is something that could be deemed potentially a nine or a 10, that $200 card can turn into $1,000 plus pretty quickly. 
Um, it all comes down to the condition, and to be honest with you, this Pokemon card could almost be a PSA 10, um, but it was only worth raw $60, so you've got to wait a couple of months to get these cards back if you go through the grading process. Um, so I don't bother with those, I'm just more stoked to take the sale really quickly. Um, this sold in a couple of weeks, and Selwyn and I are both making $25 pretty fast. So, um, yeah, Pokemon cards, we just keep chipping away. Don't have too many left, because a bit like the uh, Nintendo 64 games, they do sell very, very quick. Somebody also actually asked me about these Pokemon cards, about how to ship them off. Um, remind me, Courtney, when you jump into the post after we grab everything, mm -hmm. um, we're going to show people how, to, how we ship them off. Okay. Next one is the complete series of Sea Change 1 to 3, which if you watched our Monday vlog, we only just found this two days ago for $8 in the thrift, and we've just sold it for $35. 35 to, Oh, yesterday did you sell it? Yeah, so within a day. So um, fast. Super fast. And that was just going to a small satchel. So yeah. easy, fast money. It's a good one, Sea Change. The second I saw it in the thrift, uh, I knew that this one was going to turn over quick. I didn't think it would turn over in... 12 hours, mm. but uh, it sure enough has, and it's a very easy one to ship off. Complete series one to three, but there is actually season four and five. Yeah. Well, and yeah. you can sell it for a hundred bucks. Yeah. So that's off 35, but one to five is a big one if you can find it. I caught cash converters sleeping. I beat them at their own game, Courtney. Yeah. Do they ever sleep? Uh... Sure. Rarely. Yeah. They rarely sleep, and I caught them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actually so much more satisfying when you get a cashy sale flip. Mm. Just because you don't often see too much in the way. There's a little chip in that. I hope we got a photo of that. Anyway, um, let's have a chat. Um, so this was a PS3 Guitar Hero guitar. Um, now, these things actually can go for a lot of money if they are complete with their dongle. Now, the dongle is something like this, um, which is the receiver. Um, so there's a receiver right there. And this one is for a drum receiver for the PS3. So it's not going to actually work, but you do need these little bits. Um, the, the receivers themselves almost sell for like, well, they sell for about 40, 50 bucks. So mm. even if you find receivers only, um, you can make a lot of money on those. But these guitars, you can also make a lot of money on as well. The only issue with the guitars is the shipping is really frustrating mm. we're gonna to have to put a lot of bubble wrap around this we're gonna to have to use a lot of bushes paper and we're gonna to have to put it into a really long box because this guitar doesn't actually break down and come and compartmentalize like some of the other ones um, but we did get a hundred dollar sale price and I bought this at a cash converters for $25 25 turned into a hundred mm -hmm. I actually bought four of these guitars and we've only got one left hiding out the back there so um, the other two guitars sold for about 100 120 or so, and I bought all four for $100. So when it's all said and done, I'm going to sell them for all for about $450. Um, and they've, all, they've been received, they're working fine. Um, it's just a really cool item to find if you can get it at a decent price. It's just you want to be particular with your shipping um, because you could easily get this sort of thing damaged if you're not careful. This one is a very random one that um, people at home might actually have is this empty iPhone, Apple iPhone 5S box, literally just the box. This was Matt's um, from his mum's place that he had, which like, I wish I knew this stuff because I chucked out all this type of stuff because it's just, it's you wouldn't just think. bizarre. But Apple anything really sells um, as long as you make it very clear in your listing that it's just an empty box and for what model and whatnot. And that's what we did and it was a eighteen ninety five sale. But no purchase price because it's just that's rubbish. Um did you ever watch the T V show Naughty Corny? No, but I feel like I had books from them. Did you have this book? Mm. Couldn't tell you yet. <laughs> a classic. Yeah. Naughty. Noddy's Adventures. Cute. Classic library edition. We've got some hardcover books here. Um, look at that. Look at that. No wonder it's sold. Noddy's an absolute classic. Yeah. Uh, not happy about the sale though, Corny. No. <laughs> <laughs> At all. Would not be buying this again. Um, I don't know how long we've had this, but we only sold it for 20 bucks. 
and that is going to be very, very tough to make any money on when you're probably buying this for about five or six dollars in the thrift, and uh, you're going to ship it off. Which we're going to show you how to. Thr uh, we're going to show you the process for something like this. Yep. Um, a bit like a board game as well, which mm. we also have another one of that I'll show you later. Um, so maybe some shipping info in this video today to help you guys um, just lower your costs of, of shipping. Um, but this will still cost a little bit to ship off, even in the efficient way that we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so for that reason, a $20 sale price is just not good. And um, yeah, if I had my time again, I just wouldn't have bought it. Yeah. But um, I don't know what the comps are on eBay for it. Yeah. At the time, maybe 30 or 35 and we just kept dropping the price until we got the sale. Um, I start dropping prices after, typically after about 30 days, um, definitely after 60 days. It's just always good to monitor your store and just go back through your items. I'm doing that with the second store as well. Um, ever, ever since the first 30 days hit, uh, I've been going in on a weekly basis and just lowering the price points of the older stock. And when you've got a spreadsheet and you show the dates of when you bought your, uh, your inventory, you can go back to those items that you first bought way back when uh, and just manipulate those prices and then work on weeks two, three, four, five. So having a spreadsheet with all your different itemized out purchases is a very good thing from an inventory management perspective. Um, perfect example of this, we just had to keep lowering the price until we got the sale. Otherwise, you're gonna have all this stock sitting here at too high of a price point that no one's ever gonna buy, and you're just gonna build and build and build and build, and you're gonna have a horrible amount of inventory that's all out of whack, all out of skew, nobody wants it. Um, so you do need to manage as much as you obviously go out and buy the new We've got another day. We do. My goodness. Stunning. Look at it. It's just incredible. No. No cloud. It's like 25, 26 degrees. Yeah. Sorry, you got an item. <laughs> this one here oh, is a queen. Queen? Yeah. You got a lot of queen. Just a mixed allotment of queen DVDs. Are these live concerts? Um, greatest Hits video, a live at a Wembley, oh, live at Wembley Stadium. That would be an absolute watch, wouldn't it? Where's Wembley again? Wembley? Yeah. London. <gasps> I want to move to London. <laughs> Why London? What's, 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 what's no, your... No, I don't. Oh, you don't? I just want to go there. Check um, it out. <laughs> anyway, this is a $40 sale for these three. That's a good sale price. Yeah, it is. 40 bucks. We've had it for a little bit, though. Yeah, we so have. So it's a bit of a slow burner, but... What did we do smart about that listing, do you think? We bundled it. Yeah, And 100%. I think I lowered it. Yeah, oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, in the cull. Yeah, it's pretty... I'm yeah. pretty sure. Um, but so many people would just list those individually, yeah? Yes. Not not yeah. the right way to go about it. No. And yeah. 40, 40 bucks. bucks. Small satchel. Happy days. Yeah. Happy days indeed. Look at, look at this. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. This was a cool sale. We've got a Xbox uh, 360S console here, the white version. Um, we actually have a lot of consoles, Courtney. If you want to put the camera over this, I've just listed this one here, which is a Star Wars Xbox 360 slim white console. But the Star Wars variant can go for a lot of money. I think it's just a damaged console. Um, but this one here is tested and working. I just have an adapter and I have a controller. Um, I think there's a HDMI cable maybe that's missing to have this one be complete. But it didn't stop it going on to sell for $140. Came through five minutes ago. Mm. Um, so that's turning this sales day actually into a third strong sales day in a row, which is fantastic. But $140, Corny is gonna put a lot of bubble wrap around this. She's gonna use the butcher's paper. She's gonna put it into a box. But I think from the looks of it, I may need to go out. Although you could potentially use this yeah. It actually might. Yeah. Oh, 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 that could be a perfect box. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'll leave that for you to decide. Um, but yeah, 140 bucks. Uh, we do a lot of consoles, guys. As you can see here, we've got a lot of PlayStation 2. Xbox sells well as well. $140, a fantastic sale price. I usually buy these for about 25 to 50, and I usually convert them into about 140 odd that you've just seen here. Next one, another DVD, Daria, collection one to four. What a show. Love it. Um, how much? 24? 23. 23. Small satchel for this one as well. Yep. Yeah, pretty stock standard. Nothing too exciting about that. Bought in yep. a private pick. Yeah. Um, 23 bucks, just a couple more dollars to the kitty. Yeah. And then we've got these guys as well. These actually have come out of the second store. 
um, Storage Wars. There's a lot of different collections there. Collection one to five, oh sorry, one to six, plus Battle of the Bidders. Um, so seven different DVDs there. Somebody said that they were able to get seven DVDs into a small satchel the other day. No. That seems packed. Surely not. Surely there's no bubble wrap being used for that, no? That, yeah, you wouldn't be able to. No. I feel like there's more chance of that being damaged. Mm. Let us know if you're doing seven DVDs in a small satchel. Yeah. I get six. I get how six can work. Um, but seven seems like a stretch. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're not going to do that. We're going to go medium yeah. on that with a, with a bunch of bubble wrap. Um, but Storage Wars, really cool show as resellers um, ourselves. I'd, I'd watch Storage Wars. It's on seven May as well. Um, so yeah, that one thirty four dollars in the second store, and then this one as well, the logo board game. Now the good one about this is it's second edition. Um, second edition is better than first edition basically for this game, and that's really all you need to know. Um, we're going to show you the process how to ship this one off. We got a fifty dollar sale price. This was a friend of mine um, that gave this to me because he wasn't playing it anymore, and he said, you know what, if you're looking to sell this sort of thing, just take it. Um, so that was a free fifty dollars from him. I'll owe him a beer for sure. Um, we're going to show, uh, ship this off for about ten to twelve dollars. I'm going to show you how to do that now. Which you put around the item first, um, mainly to like. Well, yeah, main reason is to cover it up and protect it so you can't see what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not a protective element. No. It's a hide the contents element. Yeah. What's this next little step? Is the bubble wrap, which is like. The protection, like extra. Yep. So we're basically just going to whack the bubble wrap over the top. We're going to put a bunch of sticky tape around it. And then we're literally going to put the label yep. on top. Weigh, weigh it and um, measure it. And yeah, what do you reckon it will go for? I think it will go for about 10 to 12. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. And Courtney's putting this over here into the Australia Post My Business um, setup, which we can then use the printer to print off the ticket label, uh, which we're going to put on in a second. So there it is there. It works out to $14.60 to ship this off. Mm -hmm. Would have liked it to have come out to about 12 bucks, but I don't know. For me, I like shipping it off like that. I think it's a safe, easy shipment process. Saves you having to put it into a satchel, and the buyer has never been disappointed when we've sent it out like that. No. All right, now Courtney's working on the Pokemon card. Um, this is a standard process that we go through for all Pokemon cards. Um, it's just cutting up a. You've already got the, the cards already in. That's probably the first point. It should be in. You'll see there, there's a little penny sleeve, there's a little thin layer of um, protection on the card, and then it gets inserted into a top loader, which is this plastic film. Um, so that's what you want your card to be in before you send it off. You can get them from card stores. Um, you can buy them online, obviously, as well, very, very cheaply. You can get big packets of them. Um, but then once you've got that, which is already going to be a massive, um, you know, added protection, you want to give it even more, which is using this. Um, we've got a couple of pieces of cardboard here. So what we've done there is we've got both Pokemon, uh, we've got both um, cardboard sleeves basically on either side of the card. And we're actually just gonna put a little bit of tape around the card, around the cardboard, um, to make sure it doesn't slide out. Not that it would, but it's just, again, it's just a nice little added step. Whack that on there. Perfect. Because of the top loader, you're not actually gonna damage the card with the sticky tape. So that's why it's really, really important. Um, to have that top loader in there first. So that's awesome. And then from there, we go even further and we put it into a padded mailer, but the padded mailer won't fit into the envelope if we use the entire padded mailer. So we actually go ahead and we cut it. Um, we cut it down to the side. I reckon cut it down. Way to it? Down to the base of it, yeah. Base of the card. I do that? Yeah. And we could put a little bit of tape on that. So that width, if you think about a DVD, for instance, that width is no more than a DVD. So we can go ahead and put that into a tracked envelope. And we're actually using the small tracked envelopes, which are slightly less in price than the mediums. And we go ahead and we just fold it up like that. And we send them off 
like that. And we've never had any problems. Mm. Um, so that is the perfect way to go about doing Pokemon cards. Now it's at this point of the week guys where I jump on the laptop and I have a look at the latest newsletter from Flip Weekly who are also the sponsors of today's video. Now this is just a documentation of Matt who is a fellow reseller and he's sharing all the things that he finds, all the things that he sells much like I do with this YouTube channel. He just chooses to do it in written form through newsletter. And I'm absolutely loving it so much so that we've put in a couple of episodes on this YouTube channel to help grow his newsletter. Um, there is a lot of useful information. This one today, I've just noticed there was a Steve Irwin plush toy that he purchased for $35. He's trying to sell that for $110. And I have no doubt in next week's uh, newsletter, he'll have told, told all of us uh, that it's gone on to sell. So um, a very, very knowledgeable reseller, knows what he's doing. He's finding awesome items as well and he's sharing every single step along his journey. So uh, if we could look to grow his newsletter, that'd be fantastic. Um, the link is in the description below. It is completely free to join. Uh, Flipmateweekly.com is the website as well. So Matt, a big thank you for sponsoring today's video and everybody get on board. This is a great newsletter. So while Courtney goes ahead and does the post, uh, I've got a big job to do today because I don't have any listings for Courtney. Um, Courtney wasn't in yesterday and I spent the day listing up all of the items that we had lying on the floor from Monday's vlog. There was a, another full day's worth of listings. Um, but we've got to Wednesday and while she's got some shipping to do, she doesn't have any listings to do. Um, so I'm going to go out into the thrift store while she goes and does the shipping and uh, hopefully find a few items to get us through today. Uh, and then I can cover the rest of the week by hopefully landing a bulk buy. Maybe the, if any of you guys out there have got any stock that you're looking to sell, I'm basically, I'm looking to purchase. We're really low on inventory at the moment uh, and I've got money to spend. So if you're in the area, I'm happy to drive throughout the week, next week, whatever the case may be, um, we are always looking for stock. But no opportunities at the moment, so let's go to the thrift. Do you need any um, Red Bull while I'm out? <laughs> no. Are you sure? No, I have one. Oh, you have one? The other one from Monday. Oh, you didn't have two in one day? No, never. I thought you were a two a day kind of girl. No, I'm pure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll see you soon. See you soon. I'm fortunate on the Gold Coast that I've got about 18 to 20 odd thrift stores, north, south, east and west from where I live. I can pretty much go anywhere and I'm gonna hit a, a cluster of four or five. Um, so there's a couple of different routes that I can take on any given day. And I do try and like to break them up and almost hit them once a week. Uh, even once a week, you can tend to go into the same store and as you guys will know, you see stock that's been there for forever. And you can do a pretty quick swipe through because you're there so often, you know the shelves like the back of your hand. Um, and, and you know when there's a top up of new stock because it's generally good and you generally buy it and then you're back to the old stock that it used to be. Um, so I'm gonna go north today and north has probably been, well, today's Wednesday. I was probably there last Thursday. It's probably been six days since I've been in these stores. And these stores have produced for me pretty well in the past. So I don't mind going north. Hopefully we can have some luck in there today, but thrifting and, and bulk buys are the only way that I am sourcing my stock of late. Um, the flea market has really dried up of late. Um, I've also haven't gone for a month, so I've probably got to rectify that, get myself back in there. Maybe this Sunday I'll go back in there. Um, Facebook Marketplace is, isn't that great at all. I don't really look on Facebook Marketplace anymore. Super competitive over there. So I really rely on these moments that you and I are in right now, going out thrifting and trying to find items. And there is a little bit of pressure there because you've got people like Courtney, obviously, that are working with me, and I really want to make sure that she's got some work on a continual basis. I don't want to sit there and make her twiddle her fingers and then have to pay her bill, pay her paycheck, and not get any return out of it. So that means the pressure's on for us today to try and find some stock to keep things ticking along as I want them to. Um, we're at an RSPCA right now. Let's see how we go. All right, my first item of the day, we have a pair of Levi Strauss 511 jeans. Now, the size isn't amazing on these. They're a shorter length with a big, larger waist. Um, so the discrepancy there isn't ideal. I always like it when it's a bit more of a same-same a sort of a, a measurement. But um, 
look, regardless, I'm still going to pick these up. You can get about $45 to $50 for the 511s per what the comps were saying. So that was quite good. Um, I actually found exactly what I was hoping to find with those first pairs. Um, another pair of Levi 511, 30 waist, 32 length, which is much better. I think the others were like a 38 waist and a 30 length. Um, but both of these at ten dollars a piece in store. I'm going to pick them up because I reckon we can convert them into about forty to fifty. Um, so it was a decent start. Two good pairs of jeans, Levi Strauss, definitely brands uh, in the clothing game to to look out for. Um, I found this as well, which was a TomTom Tom, uh, traffic navigation map uh, device for the for the uh, car. Uh, look, these sorts of technology items can often go for some pretty decent money. I, I had a look at that little N14644 code on the back. Uh, I just put that into eBay and it was worth about 60 bucks. So in store, that was only six. So I picked that up. Awesome shoes in the next thrift store. I've got these Ultra Boosts, which had a really cool colorway. They were $25, but I'm actually going to try and list them up for about $65. we are not going to make a ton of profit. I just think it's an item that will turn quickly. And um, we've also got these as well, uh, basically a like new pair of Keen hiking boots. Uh, again, pretty steep prices here in store at $26, but I'm actually going to go ahead with the purchase on that one as well. These were amazing. We've got a pair of Steph Curry. I think these are the nines. They're the Sesame Street colorway. Uh, these would be a very sought after shoe, should sell very quickly. I would say we could potentially get upwards of $100 for these, uh, and they are a $13 purchase in store. I left these behind based on condition. Um, they were a pretty low quality item, even though they were the brand Nike. Uh, I found these Nike uh, 270s, um, just a really small size. Uh, so for $18, just based on size, I ended up putting those back. I think they were a women's six from the looks of it. Um, so I wasn't going to bother with that. Um, I've also found, well, a fair few other football boots. There were actually four pairs of football boots on this rack. I really love the look of these and I was going to grab them for $16, but I realized there was a bit of a peel out on the on the lower sole there. So you do need to check for that condition. Often the glue breaks on, on not only football boots, but all shoes in general. Um, I almost grabbed these as well, but it was just the size that ended up causing me to put them back as well. Um, as you can see there, just not something I wanted to bother with. I had a look at the jeans again in this store and um, this All Seasons Tech, uh, Levi Strauss 502, 33 waist, uh, 32 length. I thought we'd go ahead with those. All these jeans here are $12 uh, and I found my third pair, probably my best pair of 511s, 34 waist, 32 length. That's ideal uh, and I found that for $12. So that was really good. Two pairs of jeans in this store for 12s. Uh, again, we'll try and convert those into $40 to $50. So. Um, look, clothing isn't something I do massively, but um, when you're desperate for stock, it's a category I'm willing to look in. Um, now, we've got a few games here, which you never see in thrift stores, and I've gone ahead and I've had a bit of a look through each and every one of these to try and find some value. Um, they were all priced up between 5 to $6. I ended up grabbing this one here, which was a Call of Duty game. Um, so you've got Infinite Warfare. It was a steel case. We'll get about 25 to 30 for that. Um, so I'm happy to pay the $6, but all of the rest here on PlayStation 4 unfortunately didn't comp up for anything more than $15, so I just left them back on the shelf. But um, cool to see video games in any thrift store. Um, not too bad. This thrift store had quite a number of items, but there was one more before I finished up. Uh, a really, really good book series, guys. It's Canterwood or, yeah, I think it's Canterwood Crest. Uh, it's a children's horse riding, pony, stable uh, book. Um, if you get 12 or 13 episodes or sorry book series of this it can go for upwards of 100, 120 odd dollars. So I'm going to list this one up for 80 and we paid a dollar each. Well that is awesome guys. Two stores and we found 10 items. Granted we have had to pay up no doubt about it. $102 I think I spent in that last store for seven items. So, you know, what's that an average of? 13 or 14 odd dollars per item. Um, but there was some good big ticket stuff in that. I'm, I'm confident that you would have done the same thing. Because yeah, it was probably those Keen shoes that just sat with me for a little bit, but brand new, those Keen shoes are $230. It's always good to just check the retail price of the shoe as if it was new. So $230, some waterproof hiking shoes, Keen being a fantastic brand. Yes, $25, $26 odd dollars is a lot of money for a single pair of shoes. But the condition though, right? Like they were like new. So like new, $230. Well, 
a lot of international comps on eBay as well. Now, when it comes to the international comps, for those that are new, it refers to italics. So you'll see the italics in the price point, and that just refers to it being an international sale. So back when I first started, I kind of ignored those numbers, but now I pay heavy attention to them because it is still true value of that item for someone somewhere around the world. And I do offer international shipping, so I, I, it would be remiss of me not to include that information in my deliberation. So by doing that, I realized that there was sort of 80 to $90 worth of value in those shoes, and $25 then doesn't seem like too bad of a purchase. Um, so we'll see how they go. We'll get caught and list them up right away. Those Steph Curry shoes are really cool too. Love the fact that there were so many great shoes up for grabs. Um, but obviously condition was the, the main reason that caused me to go ahead with either the purchase or the leave behind. But uh, yeah, I mean, I tell you what, the last time I went out thrifting, came away with 10 items from two thrift stores to the quality of what you've seen so far today. Uh, it's been a long time. So got very, very lucky there. Uh, it's only been an hour as well. It hasn't taken very much time to get that stock. Uh, which is another big win as well. Um, not having to go around to too many stores. So I'm gonna shoot home now. I'm gonna give this to Courtney to list up this afternoon. She hopefully would have very, very close to finishing the post. Um, and then I'm gonna let her list that up, which might take her another hour to do. So that gives us another hour up our sleeve uh, to go and find more stock. Like I said, this is not an ideal day. I don't wanna be running around trying to find stock for her to list. And ultimately, if I don't find stock, she doesn't have anything to do. Um, it's a very inefficient, unpractical way of doing things, but it is unfortunately the position that we find ourselves in today. So we're just gonna have to make do and fingers crossed, hope we get a bit more luck like we have so far. I'm usually a pretty upbeat person, but that has just got me slightly angry. But I kept my cool in there. I didn't. I actually had a good conversation with a lady um, who wasn't the manager. Um, about about, I've got some footage of of the item, and the item is irrelevant, right? There were three dolls. There were three sets of dolls. They were all priced up for seven dollars, and I'm a customer that comes in here to try and pay for an item that will ultimately go towards the charity, the Salvation Army in this case. I asked the lady who was an absolute lovely volunteer, I just said, do you mind if there was a doll in each of these bags that I was to put into my own bag and take away for the price of the bag? So I was just basically moving the dolls around. I wanted three, they were all random dolls, but they just stuffed into a bag and put a $7 price on. So I said to them, I said, do you mind if I just grab that one, that one, that one, and we put that in a bag? I haven't even comped them up. I don't even know if they're worth any money. They just looked interesting. They looked like they could be worth some money and I was happy to take the stab for $7 from a resale perspective. I am looking to resell these items for a profit. But the lady decided to go out the back and see if that was possible. And as a volunteer, no worries, go and speak to the manager, get the clearance. The manager from out the back said, no, we can't do that. The dolls have been placed into the bag and that's how they're gonna be sold. They cannot be moved around once they're in the bag with their $7 price tag. So no manipulating of the stock. If you want those three dolls, buy all three bags for $21, $7 a bag. I said, you're kidding, really? I said, these are just you know, nine randomly allocated dolls that you've just thrown into a bag and put out there. And as a customer, I'm willing to, to buy a bag for seven bucks. Maybe I'm in the wrong. Maybe I shouldn't be doing that. Maybe I shouldn't be manipulating and saying, can I have this, this, and this, picking and choosing. So I said to the volunteer, I said, uh, they're not, they, I said, can I speak? I said, that was the next thing. I said, can I speak to the manager from out the back who said no, just to get an answer as to why, because the volunteer didn't have an answer why. She didn't know. She just said, that's just what she said. So I said, do you mind if I speak to her? Like, truly calmly. And uh, she said, no worries, I'll go and check for you. The manager said, or well, the manager basically refused to come out and speak to me to give me a reason why. So the volunteer came back and said, sorry, she doesn't want to come out and speak to you. And that just really made me frustrated. She'd given an answer and then she couldn't even come out and justify her reasonings as to why. 
And it's not about the dolls. It's just about everything that these thrift stores are doing lately. I, I walked up, I walked up to the back door where they all are working out the back because I could see that in my conversation with the volunteer that, that all three of them, these three women out the back, they were all watching me have a conversation with this volunteer. And when I went out the back and I just looked from the back door, the manager had kind of darted off to the left-hand side. And then I spoke to two other, I guess, volunteers that were out the back. I said, I was, I was just curious as to why the bag couldn't be split up. I'm willing to purchase um, a couple of your dolls. And uh, she said, oh, look, we often get people to come in to buy to resell. Um, so we like to make it fair by placing ultimately some good dolls with bad dolls. Um, which sounded like to me is they deliberately put them into bags to deter somebody buying them for the purpose of reselling them. That was their justification for putting it in a bag because there was, in my opinion, as a reseller, three good dolls, all in individual bags. So these, these people out the back were like, we don't want to sell to a reseller, so we're gonna make it hard for them by putting that single doll in each bag and charging $7. And if they have to buy them all at $21, it might not be profitable for them. That's what it felt like based on what that volunteer out the back had mentioned. So I said, after she'd explained for a minute or two, I said, it's interesting that you refer to a reseller. I said, I am a reseller. I said, I do resell. I buy, I'm, I'm actually looking to buy these dolls to resell them on eBay. Um, but it's curious that you raised a reseller as your reasoning for putting them in a bag. I said, if it was a kid with a child that one of these three dolls, would you have not done it for that person? And is it more that you're trying to deter the reseller? And she immediately said, I'm sorry, I can't continue to have a chat with you about this. You've already used up too much of our time. That'll do. Thank you very much. And that's really as far as it went. I didn't press her to get another word out of her. I didn't try to speak to the actual manager of the store who I'm yet to even speak to. And you know, over my journey of four years of doing selling on eBay, thrift store purchasing has been a large part of my sourcing of inventory. And arguably, I've spent upwards of, in thrift stores only, $20,000 a year. And if you times that out, and I've been in the same location, the same thrift stores locally, you times that out over the course of the four years, I've spent close to $80,000 in thrift stores that are all going to donation charities, all these charities. Vinny, Salvos, Lifeline, you name it. Ultimately, the purchase of these goods from these charitable institutions are going towards a great cause. And I don't have an issue buying an item in a thrift store to resell it for a profit. I truly don't. I wouldn't be doing the job if I felt uneasy about the process of doing that. I don't think anybody going in to buy an item from a donation centre like any of these charities should feel guilty, wrong, for going in there and trying to purchase something to ultimately make a profit. Because these people, these charities are getting these items for free and they are trying to make as much money as they possibly can. I get it, more than anything. But this is a situation where I, as a customer, was wanting to go in to spend money and for whatever reason, rightly or wrongly on my part or on their part, I was told to leave without making a purchase and I didn't get to spend any money with them at all. So I think this whole thing gets back to the point of the conflict between reseller and thrift store. And clearly this lady in here at this thrift store does not like resellers. And I still really don't understand why. So that was yesterday. And I thought I'd sleep on that little clip uh, that I filmed. And I, I wanted to put it in yesterday into this video and I thought I'd sleep on it and have a think about it and whether or not I should share it, share the experience of what took happen, whether it was rightly or wrongly on my part in trying to manipulate the stock, you know, so be it. But what it did do is it just uncovered when that lady said that it was because of resellers that we do this, uh, that kind of just let the cat out of the bag and, and made me realize that it wasn't about them trying to move a couple of dolls that were gonna to be tough to sell for them and put it obviously with a good doll that will get the bag sold. I mean, we do that with video games we sell the cheap ones off in bundles to get them sold. I get there's obviously sales tactics around moving stock, but she didn't say that. She said it was because of resellers had come in 
we want to put these into bags that allow them not to want to purchase it. And I was just blown away that she'd, she'd said that. And then by telling me that she didn't have any more time to continue to speak, told me that she realized she'd let the cat out of the bag, said something she probably shouldn't have said. Um, and she didn't want to continue the chat when I told her that I was a reseller. Um, and she was ultimately trying to stop me from purchasing something. In any business, preventing a certain customer from buying stock deliberately, I cannot, I cannot find another business in the world that would do that to a customer base. So it just leaves me feeling incredibly frustrated. I'm just frustrated. That is all it is. I'm just, you know, you, you, these people like resellers like us, we're not making millions of dollars. We're just trying to make a few extra bucks by going into a thrift store, working hard. These thrift stores have no idea the process that we go through to actually get the items sold. They have actual no idea of how much money we actually make from that $50 sale, that markup of a $7 doll into a $50 doll, how much we actually profit on it. It's not very much for the work that has to go into it. So it's just very, very frustrating that they are like that. And I wanted to share it. I've got a voice. I can say what I think, whether you agree, whether you disagree, I don't care. I just wanted to get my thoughts out and mention it in this video. So that's all I've got for you today. Sorry that it was on a little negative sour sort of a note. Uh, it's not normally like this on this channel. I usually keep it pretty positive and upbeat because that's the sort of person that I am. Um, but I, I, I really did feel like I needed to air that and mention it. Um, and yeah, hopefully the higher ups at all these places can change the messaging and the communication down the chain to get the, the price points back to a place where it's going to be affordable for the less fortunate to purchase, affordable for somebody to purchase to resell, and just get this stock turning over that comes in, these donations, rather than turning away people from a donation aspect and saying we're just too full. How about you just sell everything off at a point where anyone that comes in would want to purchase it? You're going to turn over so much more stock and it's actually going to keep the ball rolling as it should. But um, yeah, that's just my two cents. Um, leave you with this video right here, which trust me, is a much more upbeat, enjoyable video, guys. Um, so go and enjoy that one. I look forward to seeing you in the next.